Running late, you may be asking? Had too many project ideas for the winter and now they're spilling over into spring and summer? Hmm. How dare you? But also yes. This video is sponsored by Mrs. Quilty. Stay tuned to find out how you can get a delightful box of quilting supplies delivered right to your door. I don't have a lot of outerwear options, possibly because I live in a place that's fairly warm for a fair portion of the year, and also possibly because I almost never go out. The ones that I do have tend to be a bit of an overkill, or dark colors, or getting worn to death because they're the only cute one I have in my closet. So I'd love to make myself some cute, comfy, not dark colored, not super warm outer layers. Outer layers for summer in Southern California. Look, I could have just left this on the list until fall hits. That would have been fine. I've waited way longer than that to complete a project before. Some of those ideas on the big list are like multiple years old, but I have a reason to do this now. I am going to be spending a small chunk of my summer not in hot, sunny Southern California, but rather in rainy, lightly chilly to moderately pleasant England. Yay! More on that later. I pulled all the sweater feeling knits that I have in my collection. Anything that seems warm and cozy and reminiscent of a hobby that I refuse to pick up right now because I have too much going on. I have no idea how many pieces I'm gonna make this time. I'm not committing to anything. Let's just go for it one at a time, shall we? I choose you! Cool. I pause to wash some of the fabrics first. Y'all, so often whether or not I pre-wash a fabric comes down to me touching it for a bit, seeing how it feels, and then deciding if I want to take a break or not. Today, I wanted to go outside and eat a mango, so the fabric got washed. But what are we making? This material is saying cardigan to me, and I care not that I've never made a cardigan before. Say it with me. How hard can it be? I'm thinking a simple front and back with a dropped shoulder and lightly gathered long sleeves attached, ending in a cuff. Pockets, of course. All outerwear falls into the must-have pocket zone, which is another reason that this one just doesn't cut it. You pocketless debacle. I grabbed my favorite, and I think only, cardigan, just to look at some general measurements and construction, and yeah, after that I felt pretty comfortable cutting out the back piece without even marking anything. Huzzah! Wing it on the first piece, then use that as a measuring tool for the next ones. Front pieces, then sleeves, probably too big for this type of material, but I can always make them smaller later. And then all the little bits like cuffs and edging and those pockets. Almost didn't have enough left for good sized pockets, y'all. I really should not leave those for last. Here's what I ended up with, and right as I was about to start sewing, other stuff happened, and yeah, that was it for the night. But while I, um, sleep and stuff, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Mrs. Quilty, and y'all, what a fun gift to give yourself or a loved one. The Mrs. Quilty monthly subscription box comes with 16 cotton fabric quarters in the most gorgeous coordinating prints. I absolutely adore this one, along with any other supplies needed for the projects and a special gift just as a bonus. I got this adorable tin of tea in their seasonal spring box, but usually the gift is something to assist in your quilting projects. The included guide walks you through multiple projects and patterns you can do with this fabric. I could make a gardening apron, a drawstring bag, or their block of the month pattern. And the levels vary from beginner to advanced, so whether you're brand new to sewing or you've been quilting for the bulk of your life, you'll be able to make something fabulous. Or hey, if you're more into winging it, then you can always set the guide aside and go rogue. I'm seeing a patchwork corset belt in my future. It's so much fun to get a box of beautiful fabric delivered right to you and a great way to overcome those decision-making hurdles if that's been slowing you down. You can pause or cancel your subscription at any time, so it's really easy to just give it a try with one box. See if you get hooked. Click the link in my description below and use the code STITCHERY30 to get 30% off of that first box. Hard to resist, right? You know how much quilting cotton can cost these days? Now let's keep those springy vibes going with a cozy pink cardigan. Mm. I've got coffee, I've got a fennel rizzle, I've got a twin needle. Figured now is a good time to try actually using it. I experimented with it when I was trying out all the presser feet, but I didn't actually like make a thing with it, so. <laughs> We'll see how this goes. That did mean that um, 
I had to split up my only pink thread into two things. So I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna run out of that. Might have to make a trip to Joanne for this one. But I also think since this um, knit is very thin and light, I think I'm gonna use this fusible hem tape. It might not be fusible. Unfusible hem tape? I don't remember. I might use this on a lot of the seams, especially the ones that are taking support, like the shoulder seams and the pocket seams. Yeah, I don't know, we'll try things. I was also debating doing French seams, but like, I don't think I've ever done French seams on knit before. And I don't think this is a great fabric to try it for the first time. Yes. Yes. Are you looking for the snack? Let's give it a go. Okay. I mean, that gives it some really nice support, so. Cool. Let's not do the hem tape on the side seams and see how bad it is without. Exciting stuff, y'all. That wasn't bad. It didn't stretch too much at all. I do have my knit foot on here, but I mean, I also did so without a knit foot for years. So do want to emphasize that just because I started using this does not mean it's a necessity. I definitely got by without it for a while now. Yeah. Okay, gonna get some sleeves added on. I used the twin needle on the first sleeve, but it didn't give me the bit of stretch that I was hoping for in that cuff seam. Like, there's pretty much no stretch at all. Probably could adjust tension and stuff to make that better, but instead I figured I'll just go back to a zigzag stitch on a regular needle for the second sleeve. See how that compares. This is the joy of making your own clothes. You can experiment as you go, and it's rarely noticeable from the outside. The zigzag stitch maybe has the slightest bit more give than the twin needle version, but neither is great. Stuff like this is what makes me want a serger the most, but also... Meh. I'll get one eventually, but it's not the end of the world if you just have to wiggle on your sleeve cuffs with a bit of care instead of shoving your hand through them haphazardly. Pocket time, and for some reason I randomly turned on the soundtrack to Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron, and whoo baby, talk about some nostalgia. <laughs> Y'all, the spirit soundtrack had no business going this hard. This was the rebellious hard rock of my youth. Zimmerman, killing it every time. I will say the downside of using a lovely knits like this with all of this texture is that uh, when you use a matching thread and then you have to seam rip, it's almost impossible. Oh my God, this song. Play it just for me. Oh, moody 12 year old me. This was my jam. Leave me lying. Once I was pleased with pocket placement, I added the strips of edging fabric around basically the whole hem, including the neckline front opening hem area. Like all the raw edges got edged with some fabric, which I'll then fold under to make a double layered edge lining thing. Y'all, description words are hard. <laughs> First, I had to dig up how to do mitered corners again because of course I've 100% forgotten, as I do. Well, that was bad. Oh my God. Why is this not working? I'm gonna do some seam ripping. Wish me luck. After much seam ripping and sewing and seam ripping and sewing again, I finally got my corners to a state that I dubbed good enough. Good enough. Then I just had to top stitch that whole edging thing down and y'all, 
I didn't run out of pink thread. Yay for not having to go to the fabric store. Yay. Okay, for round two of light outerwear, I have selected this lovely cream material. It has almost like a blanket feel to it, like this really nice soft texture. The birds are going at it today. And I want to make something very similar to this one, which I think of as a capelet, but I guess technically would be called a poncho. Ow. Oh, the poncho as fashion era. It was smack dab in the middle of my teen years. I had a couple ponchos. I remember in, um, what was it? Ice Princess, the mean girl who I think becomes a nice girl at the end had this poncho forward outfit that um, I very desperately wanted when I was young. Oh, I thought it was so cute, so trendy. Good times. Now their back is outerwear. I do far prefer them with the opening in the front so you can like just throw it on around your shoulders like you are wearing a blanket. I mean, look at this thing. It is legit just a rectangle with like a skinny ass U cut in the center. This should be so easy to make, right? Right? I do want to make it better though. Um, First of all, I want to sew the sides together because I find this one shifts around on me a lot. Also, of course, I have to add pockets and I'd really like to add a hood because hoods are cute. But let's see how much fabric I have first. I really like the frayed edge that's already on here and I don't expect to throw this in the wash much because it's outerwear. I'll just wash it every once in a while on gentle. So can I leave that? Ow. Yeah, hi, bud. Hi. My good baby. My good, good baby. You're such a good bug. You're my new baby bug. Why are you wet? What you been doing? What you been getting into? Oh, Mr. Stinky Boy. Okay, bye. Ew. Okay. We're starting with a rectangle. I think I'm just gonna cut up the middle. A sash, two pockets, and a hood. Ooh, this fabric is shifty. Do 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 do. Yeah. Sure. I have very little fabric left, so let's hope this works. And I didn't forget anything. Pocket, sash, hood, poncho. What more do you need? I think right at the point of this V. I'm just gonna do like a small circle and I think that will be enough to fit comfortably around my neck. God forbid I measure anything. It's like a weird tooth. And then I'm probably going to put bias binding around this whole edge and then flip it entirely inside so you can't see it, it's hidden. I think I will want a lining for the hood but I'm gonna cross that bridge when I come to it which I think is gonna be tomorrow because I got some raspberry bushes and I need to go plant them. Actually, I went ahead and crossed that bridge right then because I found this lovely silky floral print I don't have very much of and I figured that'll look so pretty on the inside of the hood and lining the pockets. I didn't even bother to cut out the binding for the front on the bias because it's only binding a straight edge. So I actually want it to stretch as little as possible. Now I'm off to plant those raspberry bushes. All right, I got my coffee. I got another pastry. So many pastries. I do not have a twin needle today. None of that. Squish. Okay, so dramatic. Someone said the other day that my like little cap thing was on backwards and I was like, most of the time I don't even use it at all. <laughs> I forgot this is our yard work day. I'll catch up with you in a bit. While yard work was being done, I made a pocket. Both of these fabrics are super slidey wiggly, but they aren't really stretchy. So it's not terrible to sew on as long as I pin a bunch. Loving the lining. This was a good choice. Pocket. Gonna get the belt done next. So England. I am very excited about this. I was really hoping I would get to travel somewhere this spring or summer. I just wasn't sure where or why or how, but then this opportunity arose. And by opportunity, I mean, I just like saw a thing and was like, I wanna do that. So yeah, I'm gonna be taking a course 
with the Royal School of Needlework, which is really cool, maybe. I don't know. I hope it'll be really cool. I think it will be. So I'm gonna be in London for a little bit and then I had to do something else besides that because y'all, flights are so expensive when you are flying halfway around the world, basically. So I'm always like, all right, I gotta stay for a bit. I gotta do something else. So I'm gonna do a bit of a road trip afterward. I always try to limit myself slightly rather than being like, I'm gonna see all of England. I'm kind of staying to the lower half of England. My cutoff being Chatsworth House, cause I had to go there. But yeah, I've got a chunk of time. I'm super excited about it. I'm not gonna say when I'm going just for like, safety's purposes, but I will make some videos about it so you'll find out afterward. <laughs> and y'all, last year I was lucky enough to get to spend some time in France. If you <laughs> saw the videos about those trips, you may recall that I destroyed my feet. It had been a long time since I did that much walking, and that is something I don't want to repeat this trip. I also got super moody. Not like pouty sulky moody, but just like Lots of big feelings were happening. So I'm more prepared for that this time. I don't think the feet thing will be as much of a problem this time because the first chunk of the trip is in London and I've already been to London. So the joy of this, which is especially good considering I'm taking a class, which is taking up the bulk of the time I have there. The joy is that I have already spent a significant time in London. I did like all the touristy things. I saw pretty much all the things that I wanted to see. So I don't feel like I'm gonna spend that two weeks like running from class to go see everything possible. I can chill a little bit. I'm mainly concerned with um, getting to see some shows. Cause I have not been to live theater since like pre-pandemic. So I'm really excited to see some shows on the West End and more specifically, the one thing that I missed out on that I really cared about the last time I was in London because I hadn't planned that trip in advance whatsoever. I didn't get to see a show at the Globe. I can't remember why either nothing was showing at the time or all the tickets were sold out, but I didn't get to see one. So <laughs> I already bought tickets to two shows at the Globe because I was like, I'm doing it this time. I'm basically hoping that by chilling a lot more and taking it easier, that first chunk of the trip while I'm in London, I will be more prepared to do a bunch of walking and destroying of my feet <laughs> during the road trip portion afterward, hopefully. Does anyone else just like with shoes? <laughs> not only do I just not like wearing shoes in general, sensory wise, I prefer to be barefoot, but also like, 95% of shoes actually destroy my feet. So I really, really hate socks, which is also a sensory thing. And I know a lot of people find that gross. Ew, you wear shoes without socks, gross. Yeah, it kind of is gross. My feet stink a lot. But also, this was a weird experience in Paris. I had been walking a lot and like wearing sneakers mainly like I'm not insane, I'm not walking around in heels. I'm wearing the most comfortable shoes I have, but I was wearing them sockless. And my feet were dead, like the muscles hurt and like they had just been overused, but I didn't have like blisters or skin rubbed off or anything. And then I was like, maybe I should just suck it up and start wearing socks. So I did. First day I wore socks, blisters everywhere. Why? <laughs> just having sore muscles in your feet and stinky feet is, okay, like I can deal with that. But once you've got blisters and rawness, it's like you can't heal from that unless you stop walking around and wearing anything on your feet. Like they just need to like rest and heal. So now I'm like, nope. I have learned my lesson. Be gross, do you. Don't wear socks because you'll just regret it. I was at a background job one time and they like, gave me a costume to wear because I think it was a 90s themed show. They gave me a pair of shoes. I walked to the tent where you get changed, not that far away, like 20, 30 steps, put on the shoes in the costume, walked back to the wardrobe 
and in those 30 steps, the shoes had rubbed the skin off of both of my heels. And like, thankfully, the girl was really nice and she was like, oh my God, let me get you some different shoes that are better. But like, too late, I already had raw heels for the entire rest of the day. I was meant to be a hobbit, y'all. Meant to be a hobbit. Barefoot all the days of my life. That got a little sidetracked off of England trip information. <laughs> if there's anything that you think I absolutely shouldn't miss in either London or England lower than Chatsworth House, <laughs> do feel free to let me know. Particularly if there's anything like textile or embroidery related, preferably not a bunch of stores because I, I don't like shopping when I'm abroad because I don't like having to carry a ton of stuff back home with me. But I am a lover of castles, waterfalls, libraries, afternoon tea, trains. So yeah, I'd love your advice if you have any. The belt is done. Let's move on to the hood. If you are looking to try self-drafting or freehanding a garment, I highly recommend a poncho capelet thing like this. You can skip the hood and make it even simpler, but like, it's real easy, y'all. I fully constructed the hood the way that I normally do, so it has clean edges before I even attach it. Then I got that sewn onto the round bit that I cut out yesterday. I added the binding to the opening below that, folding it over and top stitching it down all the way around the edge. Then I sewed the sides of the cape together about halfway up. Got the pockets onto the front. They are so massive and I love that. Hi. Oh, we're back. Jeez. Yeah. And then I used the buttonhole setting to make openings on both sides so that the sash can go through. I also went ahead and added a little hidden hook and eye on the top so that it can be closed like a cape for a bit of a different look. And we're done. This ain't England, and it is already too hot to be modeling outerwear. <laughs> I'm sweaty. <sighs> but I am super pleased with both of them. The pink one here, it definitely has a bit of a um, house coat vibe. I think just because it's the baby pink mixed with this specific design, it just makes me think of like, I don't know, someone in the hospital. <laughs> but it is cute. It is warm and cozy. I was sweating while wearing it, but not nearly as much, whoa, not nearly as much as I was sweating in this. <laughs> this feels so nice. It definitely has like a robe vibe to it, especially because it's cream. Do not care about that at all. This fabric is also just really pleasant to wear if it wasn't so hot already, but it actually tends to be like fairly cool to the touch when you first put it on and it's nice and soft. So it's really pleasant and it's only after I was wearing it for like five to 10 minutes and moving around that I was like, oh, there's sweat dripping down my back. So it's also warm. <laughs> Perfect. I will say something on this. I think I'm gonna go back just for safety on the buttonholes that I made to put the sash through. They all look okay, but I'm a little concerned that they're not really strong enough to have something pulled through them back and forth consistently. So I think I'm gonna go back with embroidery thread and do like a hand buttonhole stitch all the way around all four of those, just to make sure that this lasts longer, survives and all that. But yeah, I definitely think come next winter, I'll be throwing this on just around the house to be cozy in. It is a little bit 
heavy for traveling. That's my only concern here, which I didn't quite think about when I started this project a couple days ago. When it comes to packing for a trip abroad, I try to pack as light as possible, which often means I can't bring all the cutest clothes that I'd like to bring. And when it comes to outerwear in the middle of summer, I do have like an actual raincoat. And considering it does rain in England a lot, I think that might be the main or possibly only outerwear that I bring. So I don't actually know in retrospect if this is gonna make it to England. This one, maybe, because it's a lot lighter and it's a lot smaller and stuff. Either way, <laughs> it was really fun to make both of them. That's kind of new stuff in my lexicon. Is that the proper word? What does lexicon mean? I don't know, I'm gonna say it. In my lexicon of things I've made without a pattern. I feel like I've done several just straight sewing videos in a row now, but um, possibly I'm avoiding a couple projects that are bigger and might take longer, like maybe doing my fabric closet. Oh well, I'll never run out of stuff to sew, so. So, 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 so. See you next week. You are so pretty, I just wanna squish your face. Oh my baby. Hi, I love you so much. Yes, I do, I love you so much. You're so soft and clean. He had a bath. Did you have a bath? Me, it's just squishy, but. Oh God. But why sew a seam when you don't need to sew a seam? Not now. Do I sound like I know what I'm doing? Because I don't. What is happening with these pockets? No need to be dramatic. He's such a stunk of a